Dear friends, welcome to the Christ the Vine German Dinner, our annual event to celebrate the great reformation of the Christian Church in the early 16th century. Tomorrow, October 25th, is Reformation Sunday. You know, this year we have to do things a little differently. So instead of gathering here at church, we're having a virtual dinner. But don't worry, the food is real and I think you'll find it delicious. I hope all of you who signed up were able to stop by church and pick up your dinners. You know, thank you to Jason and Angie Nelson and to Galen and Ann Breckenridge and to Clayton and Jody Smith and to Dan and Linda Hermes and everyone else involved in preparing these dinners tonight. I think you'll agree they did a fantastic job. Before we eat, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the clear understanding of the, of the gospel and the clear articulation of the gospel, which is the legacy of the Reformation. And before we eat, we pray, come Lord Jesus, be our guest and let these gifts to us be blessed, amen. Well, let's eat. Oh, pastor, pastor, pastor. Hey, Splash. Oh, 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 am I too late? I'm glad you're joining us. Uh, I heard there was food. Um, is there any left? Well, we made a lot, so I'm pretty sure there'll be at least a little left. Oh, good. I was worried. Oh, um, also pastor? Yes? Um, I don't know if how to tell you this, but there's this guy outside. A, a guy? Yeah, um. What guy? I don't know, but he's dressed kind of funny like uh, Pinocchio or something. And, and he's holding a small piano and maybe a big slinky. I don't know, um, but he might be like those cosplayers I've heard about. Oh, that's not a cosplayer. That's Neil Zeller. He's an accordion player. We always have him come to our German dinner and, and play his accordion. He's really good. He's been doing this for 10 years. And he's wearing a traditional German outfit. It kind of helps to add to the atmosphere. Oh, a, a German outfit. Uh, that explains what they call those uh, lederhosens. Wow, that, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is cool. So Splash, why don't you come on in and get some food? As for everyone else, I'd like to introduce Neil Zeller.
an experience. I feel like the food and the music, well, it was like I was teleported to Germany for a second. Did you get enough food, Splash? Um, I think so, but I don't think I got enough music. Well, that's okay, because we have a lot more music lined up. Oh, oh no, Pastor. I'm so sorry. I forgot my mask. Wait, Splash. You don't need to grab your mask. Uh, wait, why? Because we're doing this all remotely, so everyone can feel safe during this time. Oh, well, wait. Well, what about you and I? We're in the same room. Splash, do you have lungs? Um, no. The virus only affects people with lungs. You and I are safe. Oh, okay. Speaking of being safe, we have the very talented Linda Barecki and the rest of the hand chime players tonight. They're a new group this year who plays the hand chimes, which is a wonderful addition to our music, since it is COVID friendly. And it allows for social distancing and doesn't create a lot of air movement. Let's enjoy. Musicians. Wow, I didn't realize we were going to have so many talented musicians today. Well, what did you think was going to happen today? Um, oh, I, I, I'm not sure. I kind of stopped reading the email once I saw the word food. Splash, do you always think about food? No, sometimes I think, uh, think about, oh, the Reformation and Sundays. Splash, are you just saying that because you heard me use the phrase Reformation Sunday? No, I heard the word yesterday, way before you said it. In the email? Yeah, in the email. Splash, do you even know what Reformation Sunday is? Um, oh, it's a day where we eat bratwurst and listen to ger or brass music. Well, uh, yeah. Well, I, I mean, no. I, I mean... How did you know we were going to have brass music? Um, well, there, there's that guy in the tuba. Um, he gave it away. Oh. Yeah, you're right, being that we are going to have some brass music. But you and I are going to talk about Reformation Sunday and what that really means in a minute. But before that, we're going to have our Christ the Vine brass players play. They enjoy playing for the, the German dinner so much that they decided to play a polka for us, for the postlude. In fact, they like to call it a polka lude. Let's enjoy the CTV brass. <laughs> Thank you. 
talked about Martin Luther. Martin Luther? What does German food and polka music have to do with Superman? Superman? Oh, you're thinking of Lex Luther. No, Martin Luther. He's a very, very important man to our church. Oh, Martin Luther. Yeah, I know about him. You do? Yeah. Martin Luther was born on January 15, 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia. He was an American Christian minister and an activist who was very important to the civil rights movement during the late 50s and the early 60s. Uh, he famously made the I Have a Dream speech. Um, no. You're thinking about Martin Luther King Jr. Wait. How do you even know about him? Oh, uh, I heard about him on NPR. You listen to NPR? Yeah, it helps me fall asleep, um, but sometimes I, I also learn something. Well, I'm glad you sometimes learn something, but today you're going to learn about THE Martin Luther. Oh, uh, who was he? Well, he was a German monk who was around during the 1500s. He did some truly amazing things that helped define our church today. In fact, he is the reason we call ourselves Lutherans. Oh, wow, I had no idea. What kind of things did he do? Well, for example, he translated the Bible from Latin into German so many of the German people could read the Bible. He also stood up to the Catholic Church, which at that time was doing some things that were not okay. Uh, well, like what? Well, you see, at the time, the Catholic Church was saying that if people truly wanted to be forgiven, they had to buy these things called indulgences. But I thought forgiveness was a gift from God through Jesus. Well, that's it. It is. And Martin Luther knew that what the church was doing was wrong. So he went to this famous church in Wittenberg, Germany, and nailed his 95 theses to the door. Um, his 95 what? 95 theses. A theses is, well, it's a, it was a list of theological positions that Martin Luther wanted to propose and debate. Um, and he nailed them to the doors of a church? He in did. In front of everyone? 
And in fact, we have designed our own sanctuary doors to look like the very doors of that Wittenberg church. And him nailing his theses to the doors set off a movement that we call the Reformation. The Reformation led to the birth of the Protestant church. Oh, that's why we call it Reformation Sunday. Exactly. You see, Martin Luther gave us a renewed understanding of the scriptures. He helped people understand that it is not because of our good deeds that we are saved and go to heaven, but it is a gift from God. Oh, I see. So Martin Luther is the reason we are even here as a church. And so that is why we have German music and food. It's kind of like our, our church's heritage. Exactly. Wow, this is so cool. Uh, what is even cooler is that you, you were able to get Martin Luther himself to show up. What do you mean? Mm, I mean, isn't that him over there? Oh. He, he kind of looks familiar though. I wonder if I saw him in a movie or somewhere. <laughs> I'm Martin Luther. You know, these 95 theses started a while ago, before I became a professor at Wittenberg University. In fact, this all started when I was a monk. And I'm not bragging or anything. Well, maybe a little. But I was a good monk. I worked hard to follow all the rules. I did everything I could do to make myself worthy of God's favor in my life. I especially just wanted to be sure I was going to heaven someday. And there was this phrase in the first chapter of Romans that just drove me crazy. The phrase was, the righteousness of God. And I spent all my time as a monk trying to achieve the righteousness of God. I tried everything I could think of to become perfect, but I couldn't do it. And I knew I couldn't do it. And it drove me to despair. How could I be sure I was going to heaven? if I couldn't attain the righteousness of God. It drove me nuts. But then it dawned on me. I guess the Holy Spirit revealed it to me. The righteousness of God is not something we achieve. The righteousness of God is something we receive. We are righteous in the eyes of God because we've been declared righteous due to the work of Christ on our behalf. Our righteousness comes from the fact that Jesus shed his blood for us. He has the authority to declare us righteous. So these 95 theses are a list of propositions. The first one proposes that we do not receive forgiveness and therefore righteousness because we buy indulgences or give money to the Pope. The gifts of forgiveness and righteousness are free, and they're given to us. We can't climb up to God by giving money or buying indulgences. We can't climb up to God, period. Instead, God came down to us as a man, and his name was Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah. I've got a bunch of propositions like that, 95 of them. So I'm gonna nail them to the door and see what happens. Come on in.
<laughs> uh, it's funny because it's a tuba. <laughs> wow, these guys are actually uh, pretty good. I like it. Oh, I'm really glad I got some German food sent all the way down here. I would have missed out.